this 2020 there is going to be a heat of politics the policy politics of the country will heat up the heated up is for the interest if for interest i am seeing international interest in nigeria international interest in nigeria and uh, this pressure will lead to a point that the country will now begin to search for remedy to the pressure what is the pressure the pressure is pressure about agitations pressure about religious and different pressure i'm seeing a pressure that come upon nigerian government and this pressure become international pressure the pressure that begin to escalate to a point that nigerian government will now have no option but than to come to a dialogue a serious dialogue a serious dialogue because of the year 2023 this year is not 2021 it's not 2022 but it's 2020 but in 2020 i see people now begin to i see which hunt take note we have submitted our petition we've addressed a press conference on the issue and as we speak mr president had lost control of security our nation is in danger we are in pain and we are in trouble. And as a party, we cannot keep our hands waiting for the propaganda of the presidency. This country belongs to all, everyone, all Nigerians. And today, we backed our minority leader, asking and demand that Mr. President should resign. Uh, today, uh, at the American Embassy, uh, and we've just submitted our petition on behalf of the leadership of the PDP and the poor masses of our country. The need for the international community to come to the assistance of our dear country, because Nigeria is a member of Committee of Nations. Nigeria is not an island on itself. It's a member of the United Nations. And so when things go wrong, uh, other international community can come to advise. And that's why we are here. And the content of our, our petition is for other international communities to come to the aid of Nigeria and to advise our government to obey the rule of law, especially as it relates to the National Assembly and the judiciary. Uh, over the past few weeks, we have passed through very difficult and challenging times. Okay, so right now, they are marching towards the Onika area of Lagos. Um, quite a number of them are down the road of Zumban, but they are marching towards the Onikon area. We want seriousness. No more lip service. No more lip service. We need action. 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 sick and tired. Our brothers and sisters in diaspora can no longer come home because of the monstrosity, the animalism, and the brutality of the police. We want to say Kabudo Rigdetamenta to that. We are calling for total reform of the tactical teams and the entire police. If the 
the Inspector General of Police lacks the mental capability and the intellectual capacity to reform the SARS. We are saying clap, dance the start. And uh, this is the you know the first of its kind. And um, you all should you know get ready for what about to happen. I would also like to thank Silas Oja for creating this petition, which now has more than 220,000 signatures, including almost 2,000 of my own constituents in Edmonton who signed the petition we are debating today. And I'm sure that I'm not the only member to have been inundated with messages from constituents in recent months, urging them to do whatever they can to lend their voice to the NSARS protests. As the chair of the all-party group for Nigeria, I was particularly keen to speak on this debate and highlight the need for the UK to stand with the Nigerian people against an increasingly cruel and brutal regime. The situation in Nigeria is incredibly serious, with tragedy after tragedy unfolding on the streets in state after state. As the Nigerian government and its security forces take ever more repressive measures to end a protest movement, which has given hope to millions across the globe. The end SARS movement is not just about disbanding the special anti-robbery squads. It is a movement led by the youth of Nigeria who took to the streets of Nigeria peacefully, demanding an end to brutality, extortion and extrajudicial executions and for a truly democratic Nigeria. The bravery of the youth-led movement will never be defeated. Today, we need to consider how the government should respond to both the movement itself and the violent actions of the Nigerian regime. However, we must also take this opportunity to look beyond sanctions to a way in which development funding is spent in Nigeria. Instead of funding corrupt security services and investing in projects which do not benefit ordinary Nigerians, we need a new focus on poverty relief and anti-corruption programs. Mr Gray, it is vital that we recognise the role of the UK and how these events have unfolded in Nigeria. Despite previously stating the opposite, the government has now admitted to funding SARS units for the last four years. That funding not only included the provision of training to those units, but the supply of equipment. At the very moment in which Amnesty International had declared SARS units to have been involved in extra judicial killings, corruption and torture, the government was using the aid budget to train and equip those units. In fact, between 2016 up to this year, more than 10 million went towards programs from which SARS units benefited. That is not only immoral, it makes it harder for UK to play a positive role in Nigeria during this vital period. How can the government, with a straight face, call for an end to violence against protesters, having helped train and equip the security forces who are carrying out that violence? So today, I hope the Minister will publicly apologise for, for the decision to fund SARS units and pledge a full and independent inter inquiry into this matter. Mr Gray, the 20th of October 2020 will be remembered as the Lekki Tollgate Massacre, the day a deliberate and coldly calculated attack on peaceful Nigerian civilians was carried out by the Nigerian army. The Nigerian government has since taken part in an attempted cover-up of this massacre. Security forces in Nigeria make muted responses to the murder of protesters. While governments across the world have called on the Nigerian government and the security forces to stop killing protesters, the UK government has hedged its bets, issuing only weak and timid statements. It is therefore a gift to the Nigerian government when our government fails to explicitly condemn the Nigerian regime for killing its own citizens. So will the minister today finally condemn the Nigerian regime for its part in the Tollgate massacre and the continued killing of peaceful protesters in Nigeria? Mr Gray, the Nigerian government says that it has disbanded SARS. But the corruption and brutality of the security forces continues. 
the Nigerian government's violence against its own citizens appears only to be intensifying. The Nigerian government needs to stop freezing bank accounts of key protesters. It needs to stop illegal detentions of key protesters. The Minister of Information for the federal government went on record to state the CNN reporting of the massacre is, and I quote, fake news. This is undemocratic conduct and it really needs to be called out. So I ask that the Minister uses this opportunity to end the UK government's neutrality on this issue. The UK must never be neutral when it comes to human rights abuses. Are the rights and needs and dreams of young Nigerian people not the same as those that are here in the UK? The UK should not be a safe haven for anyone who, de who denies their own citizens the same freedoms they come to enjoy in the UK. Mr Gray, all too often, when a repressive regime is targeted with economic sanctions, it is the civilians who pay the price, while the regime itself becomes more entrenched and less open to change. But the UK government can use the sanctions under the global human rights regime, which targets individuals involved in human rights violations and abuses. So, if the UK's position is a global force of good, then I ask the UK government to add the names of the Nigerian government and the security services to the designated list of those responsible for the worst human rights abuses. As I come to a close, it is time for the UK to change course and stand in solidarity with those fighting for a new Nigeria. Let's stand together, let's get rid of corruption, extortion, extrajudicial murders and massacres because it's time for a new Nigeria. And I thank you. Don't do that. Thank you, Mr. Gray, for calling me speak. And I must say, it's a pleasure to follow my honourable friend, uh, the Honourable Lady for Edmonton, who speaks quite rightly with great passion about one of the great countries in this world that is sadly being racked by violence and violence against young people. Now, I would argue that the greatest book in the English language, and I know there may be some debate about this, but the greatest book in the English language is Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe, the great Nigerian writer. And the beauty of that book is the way it explains the challenge of changing generations to live together and the way it speaks about values falling away and community being eroded by outside pressure. What we're seeing in Nigeria today is part of that story. It's a tragedy that we are watching. It's a tragedy that we are all witnessing because as we see things falling apart, the pressure this time is not foreign colonialism, colonialism, forgive me. The pressure instead is corruption and violence and attempts at control. And that's why I totally agree with my honourable friend, the member for Edmonton. We need to call out the corruption. We need to use the powers that we have in this country to stop those who are profit profiting from the wealth of that great nation and hiding it here. Now, some people will remember when General Gowan left Nigeria with half the central bank, so it is said, and moved to London. We know that today, even, even now, in this great city of ours, there are, sadly, some people who have taken from the Nigerian people and hidden their ill-gotten gains here. We know that our banks, sadly, have been used for that profit and for that illegal transfer of assets. And that means that the UK is in an almost unique position in being able to actually do something to really exert pressure on those who have robbed the Nigerian people. Now, this puts a particular onus on the minister, and I know my right honourable friend knows it, that using Magnitsky sanctions today isn't just about protecting Nigeria, although it is, it's not just about respecting Nigerian young people who have been robbed and murdered by these SARS units. It's actually about protecting the United Kingdom, because what happens in Nigeria matters fundamentally to us here. This is the third country of the Commonwealth. This is a country of 200 million people. It is going to be the great economic powerhouse of Africa and one of the great economic powerhouses 
of the world. This is a country whose wealth, not just in the oil off the river state, but in the imagination of cr and creativity of its people, is witnessed every day in Nollywood, and perhaps more my style, at the great university of Joss. This is a country that gives so much to the world already, despite the fact that it is ill-governed, brutalised and robbed. Just imagine what it could give if the Plateau State wasn't a scene of conflict and anti-SARS movements, but instead was the global centre of learning that it really, truly could be, and indeed was up until the 1960s. So look, this is an opportunity for the UK to do something real. Not just in the interest of Nigerians, though it would be. Not just in the interest of Africans, though it would be that too. But fundamentally, in the interests of the British people. This is a moment when these petitioners have got it absolutely right. They are not just arguing for the rights of young Nigerians who are claiming their own rights. They are arguing for the rights of Democrats, of free people, and of honourable people everywhere. And I hope that my right honourable friend and her colleague, the Secretary of State, will listen, will look at the sanctions regime, and choose very carefully where they apply. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gray. It's a, a pleasure to speak in this meaningful debate and to, to follow the Honourable Member for Tunbridge and, and Morling. The events surrounding the NZARS protest in Nigeria has caused global concern and outcry. Last month, mainly young Nigerian people took to the streets in a peaceful protest against police brutality. And on the 20th of October in Lagos and in other parts of the nation, the military are alleged to have attacked peaceful protesters with disproportionate force and have killed and injured civilians. The world watched the horrific videos. The world saw the awful pictures from the scene. The world heard the eyewitness accounts from survivors who managed to escape the horrors of that night. Human rights agencies such as Amnesty International have supported these claims. Despite the overwhelming evidence, Nigerian government and military initially denied that the military were at Leki and labelled the events as fake news. Media companies received a memorandum from the National Nigerian National Broadcasting Commission to silence them, not to embarrass individuals, organisations, government, cause disaffection or panic to the society at large, following reporting on the events of that dreadful night. Consequently, some media houses who did report on the events were fined. The bank accounts of some organisers involved in the protests have been frozen by the central Nigerian bank pending investigations. Some organisers involved in the protests have been arrested or harassed by the authorities. These actions equate to the preventing and indeed stopping free speech and the right to peaceful protest by the state, and this is unacceptable. Peaceful protests are vital to the functioning democracy and are a fundamental human right. These rights should be upheld and respected. Many of my constituents who have a Nigerian background are in great distress. Those that have relatives and friends in Nigeria are concerned about the safety of their loved ones and have contacted me about this situation. I indeed have close friends in Nigeria who are also deeply concerned and have contacted me about this. They all ask for one simple thing, that the UK government defends the right to peaceful protest and free speech and ensures that those within the Nigerian government and army are held to account for the atrocities committed against peaceful protesters. Given the shared history between the UK and Nigeria, and as a fellow member of the Commonwealth and ally, the UK has its duty to stand up for human rights of Nigerian citizens. In the case where Nigerian officials are avoiding accountability over the killings of protesters, I believe that the UK should be looking to impose sanctions on state officials involved in the human rights abuses of Nigerian citizens. 
In July of this year, the Secretary of State for Foreign Commonwealth and Developmental Affairs introduced the Global Human Rights Sanctions Regulations. Under this statutory framework, priority themes relate to cases that threaten media freedom and human rights defenders. Furthermore, another priority theme considers cases where the relevant jurisdiction law enforcement authorities have been unable or unwilling to hold those responsible for human rights violations or abuses to account. The government clearly have the tools to ensure that Nigerian state officials respect the constitutional and fundamental human rights to protest and free speech. If those who ordered and facilitated the killings and harm to protesters are not held accountable, then the UK government should advocate for independent investigations to take place. And following investigations, any individuals found responsible for these atrocities of human dignity must face sanctions. Right. I'm very grateful, Mr Gray. Um, it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship and it's really good to see you looking so well. Um, I'd like to um, thank the Honourable Member too from Chipping Barnet for introducing this debate, for her passion, and um, also to all of my Honourable Friends, also for their passion, their expertise and their clear demands um, that we're making today in this chamber. And it's good to hear that the demands are unanimously held across what is sometimes a divide. Um, as we know, the SARS police unit was suspected of abuses against thousands of innocent Nigerians over the past 28 years. It's sadly clear that Nigeria does have a serious problem with abuses of state power and with corruption, which goes way beyond SARS. The protest movement that we are seeing rise in Nigeria wants all of these abuses addressed. Security Network. An Umbra State Command on patrol. Patrolling our farms to make sure that there is adequate security for our mothers to farm, our women, to make sure there is no crime anymore in our country in this old eastern region.
to make sure that our bushes are free from kidnappers, flanny henchmen, killings of any kind to make sure they stop it in old eastern region. We make sure that our land is free from every crime, killings, or whatever you might call it. We don't want it again. We don't want it again. Our land. This is to make sure that there is adequate security for all the old eastern zone. We are live here in Anambra State. Patrolling to make sure that there is good atmosphere, security for our people, to make sure that our women are free to farm in our land. To make sure there will be no more rape, there will be no more killings, in this old eastern region. This is security network. This is old eastern security network. Launched by Maze Namdi Okukano, the supreme leader of IPOB worldwide. They are on patrol. We are patrolling all the farms and bushes to make sure there is no kidnapping, no raping, that our land will be free from any crime. 